Hello, welcome to Rear Facing Toddlers. This is the fifth part of my Britax Heritage campaign videos on old car seats, and this one is the Club Class Extra from 1995. The Club Class Extra was a car seat that could rear face from birth to 13 kilos, which is about two years, and it could also face forward from 9 to 18 kilos, and that's roughly nine months to four years. This is an R4403 car seat, and under the R44 regulation, the belt path has to be indicated in either blue for rear facing or red for forward facing. And on this car seat, you can see both because it could be used in both directions of travel. So this sticker on the side of the seat, although the sticker itself is white, it shows the belt routing in blue. So this is the rear facing instructions. There's a blue arrow here where the rear facing seat belt goes. And these red bits here are for when the seat is forward facing. And then when I turn the, turn the seat the other way, there is a sticker on this side where the belt path is indicated in red. So that shows how it's installed forward facing. I used the club class for three of my children and this was one of my sons in 1995 when he was three years old. To show that this car seat was suitable from birth, I've put this navy head hugger inside it to, so that I can show it to you with my newborn baby doll. But before I put the doll in, I'm going to install the seat in the car. This was my baby daughter in 1997 when she was just a few months old. She was still in her rockabye infant carrier, which she continued to use until she no longer fitted. But I just thought it was cute to take a picture of her in the club class. And two years later, I did exactly the same thing again with her baby sister, who was 10 weeks old in this picture. She's wearing exactly the same dungarees. And again, she was obviously still using her infant carrier, but I just thought it was cute to take a picture of her in this big car seat. When this seat is installed in the car, it has to be on full recline and you do that by squeezing the lever down here at the bottom and tilting the seat back. And you then position it rear facing, but with a bit of a gap, because if you close the gap too early, you can't reach the seat belt path. So you leave the gap open, you then pull out the seat belt, pass it under this hook, then place the lap belt in these two blue hooks down here underneath the seat. And then you pass this belt through that hook and then buckle the belt in. Slide the seat back to close this gap and pull the belt really tight by leaning on the seat and pulling the belt as you go. Then wrap the diagonal belt around the back and then thread it through this blue guide here on the back of the seat. That side first and then up from underneath through the other side and pull it all tight. Just to show the belt routing one more time, the lap belt sits in four hooks underneath the seat, two on this side and two on this side, and then the diagonal belt goes up around the back and through that blue guide. Once my daughter no longer fitted in her infant carrier, I put her in the club class in the front of my car. And it very quickly became clear that it wasn't very comfortable because I don't know if you can tell from the picture, but the diagonal belt was actually rooted through the middle of the top of the seat. And that meant that the belt rested on the baby's head. And now it's time to put the baby in the seat. So you need to lift the baby over the diagonal belt, put her down in the seat, make sure her head's in the cushion. You then put the baby's arms under the straps, straps on the shoulders, put the two parts of the buckle tongue together and click them into the buckle. You then pull the straps up through the buckle to remove the slack from the hips and pull the adjuster strap to tighten the harness. And that's the Club Class Extra installed rear facing for a baby from birth up to 13 kilos. After a few years, Britax decided to upgrade the seat and the Club Class became the Club Class Extra. And the big difference was that the seat belt was no longer rooted through the middle of the top of the backrest. It now wrapped around the side instead, which is a lot better because now the seat belt was no longer on the baby's head. Unfortunately, although my daughter did use the seat rear facing for a while, I didn't take any pictures of her in it. So here she is forward facing at the age of about two. And I'm now going to alter the harness height to make it higher for a bigger baby to go forward facing, which pains me to say that because babies should never go forward facing. But this seat is from 1995 and that's what we used to do in those days, unfortunately. Start by loosening the harness by putting your thumb down on this button, lengthen the harness, and then press this red button to undo it. 
And what was unusual about this car seat is that the hip straps had to come out of the bottom to change the harness height. And they were tied on with elastic straps going through this bracket. They've lost all their elasticity, so they're just like bits of, bits of string now, but they were elastic once. So you then pass this bracket up through this hole and then out through here. You then take the same strap with the buckle tongue through the pad. I used this seat for three of my children in the 1990s, so I remember it well, and this was not an easy thing. If you had to alter the harness height or wash the covers, to get the pads off, you had to thread the strap through the pad with its buckle tongue, which wasn't that easy. It got stuck a little bit. Right there, that, that's that bit. Then this one turns sideways and also goes through. And then I'll repeat the same thing on the other side. And now that I've undone both straps, I'm going to turn the seat round and then pull the straps out from behind. And again, it gets a little bit stuck. It's not that easy. That's one. And then the other one. And it's always easier to do the buckle tongue first, sort of halfway up the strap, so the buckle tongue and the bracket don't have to go through together because that makes it much harder. And now the head hugger can be removed by passing the pads through these holes. And then the head hugger is just a loose cushion that just comes off. Turn the seat round again and pull this strap to take the pads out and then pass the pad straight back through the hole above. Pull them through to the front. And then you have to do the same thing with the straps and you've got to make sure that there are no twists in it anywhere, that it's all really, really flat. And then you have to pass them through this hole one by one. And then this one, just pull it through buckle tongue and the bracket on the end and then you have to pass them back through these pads there was a little bit of sand falling out of the pads they're so old that the dust or the, the foam inside has disintegrated over the years and it's now just powder so if you see any brown powder falling out that's what it is so that bracket on the end's now gone through now the buckle tongue this one has got this bit that sticks out on the side or which one is it one is bigger than the other i remember that was always a bit difficult i think this is the bigger one so this one should be the easiest of the two. So that one goes through, grab it from underneath, pull it down. And then the other one into the pad, pull it through. And then this one. Now that one gets a little bit stuck. That's it. Right. So then you have to make sure that the straps aren't twisted. And the easiest way to ensure that is to do up the buckle before you put the straps back into the side of the seat. And now all that's left to do is pass these end brackets through the holes where the hips are. So now I'm passing the bracket on the other side through. And what used to be really common with this car seat is when the harness is loose and the child isn't in it, this buckle used to fall down and that would sometimes cause the straps to twist. So to stop that from happening, there was a strap of elastic here that you had to just do up to fasten the cover. But I always used to pass the, this through the bracket to stop it from twisting. I don't think that was an official thing that Britax recommended, but it worked well. And this is my fourth baby, my second daughter, who was born in 1998. In this picture, she's about 15 months old and she is rear facing in the club class extra in the front passenger seat of my car. This was the same seat that her sister had used, but I bought a spare cover for it in this rust check fabric. So this is a doll that's roughly the size of a one year old, which is much too young to go forward facing nowadays, but in 1995, that's what we used to do. So I've now put the seat forward facing in the car and I'm gonna show you how it used to go in. In this car seat, the seat belt has to go through the back here, but that gap is too small for your hand to fit through. So before you can install the car seat, you have to place the seat on full recline. You then pull out the seat belt, pass it through here. It's easier if you step into the footwell. You then grab the seat belt with your other hand behind the seat, pull the buckle tongue all the way out and buckle it in. 
The diagonal belt then has to go up here and the lap belt has to sit on this black bit of metal here away from the plastic. You then pull it tight. You now pull the belt really tight, as hard as you can. And then place it in this block here and push this down. And all this does, it's quite a floppy piece of plastic. It doesn't actually lock or click or anything. But because the belt is trying to go back to slacken, as it does that, this round clip will actually go down with it and that's what holds it in place. I have installed this car seat with the lap belt coming over the top of this bar here, but it does actually have an alternative routing because in some cars, especially older ones in the 90s, the buckles were a lot longer and a long buckle would have rested on this plastic or metal part here. So if that was the case, the seat belt would go underneath instead of on top and come through here. And then when you pulled it tight, that long buckle would actually disappear in that hole and not touch any metal parts. And I'm going to just loosen the harness, ready to put the baby in. My thumb goes on this tab here and I pull the straps to lengthen, press the buckle button and open the straps. And I'm going to put the baby in the seat, buckle between his legs, shoulder straps on his shoulders, the buckle tongue together, the two parts, if I can find them. There we go, place those two bits together and then into the buckle. Pull the straps up through the buckle to remove the slack from the hips and then pull this strap to take out the slack. So this is the seat on full recline, but it did have multiple positions, so you could sit it more upright for older children. Make sure it clicks into place. And this is how the Club Class Extra was installed forward facing in the car with the lap belt down here and the diagonal belt in that red clip up there. And here is my fourth baby in the year 2000 when she was about 18 months old. She is forward facing in the Club Class Extra. She was a very small baby and she probably didn't reach the 13 kilo rear facing limit until she was about two and a half or even three years old. But in those days, I had no idea of the dangers of early forward facing. So I turned her around at 15 months. So this was the final part of my series of videos for the Britax Heritage campaign. I had six Britax car seats in my loft. I've made videos on all of them now. I will keep looking and if I find any more secondhand, I will make more videos. And I have also actually got some other car seats, older ones from, again, from the 1990s, not Britax, different brands. So over the coming weeks and months, I will make some more of these old videos because I think it was a lot of fun. And before I end this video, I just wanted to add this little picture. A few years after I had had the Britax Rockabye and Club Class car seats in the navy fruit fabric, I came across the exact same fabric in a local sewing shop. So I bought a few metres of it and I used it to make curtains for my daughter's bedroom. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.